Hello, so we wanted to be able to um, adjust microphone placement on guitar cabs and the like. And if you have a friend, you can get that done pretty easily. Uh, and then you get a little separation on the person listening to the sound coming through the microphone from a distance. Uh, but when you're alone, you end up with your headphones on or something and you end up with your head down close to the speaker. You know, it's, it's blaring and you can't really get a good listen through your headphones. And so one of these robotic arms, uh, in this case, we're just gonna build a single axis robotic arm. Uh, you can look these up and, you know, if you get one, if you buy one that has, you know, all the axis, more than four, four axis, I don't know. But um, if you look them up and you, you'll find that they're really expensive. So I thought we'd give it a shot and just try to make one. Um, starting out with the actuator arm, uh, in this case, we have a 23 NEMA stepper motor. If you're looking into this, you might even be able to get away with uh, a DC motor and maybe save a dollar or two. We also went with the 300 millimeters, which, you know, all said and done, it's, I got 14 inches here. So realistically 12 or 13 inches of play. So I was just thinking, hey, if you got a, one of the biggest speakers, an 18 inch sub or something like that, you know, you could technically you divide that in half. You got nine inches, you at least have, you know, nine inches to scan and sweep for uh, the best spot for yourself. So I started with this and then with trial and error, figured out the rest, um, ended up with the power supply. Um, I did want to do this remotely once again to, you know, get some distance between me and the speaker. Um, so in this case, uh, I have a stepper motor driver controller with the remote. Once again, matching stepper motor with the stepper motor on the actuator, uh, actuator arm. Um, and then also I needed uh, this stepper, in this case it's stepper and DC, but um, this stepper motor driver module, the two amp. Yeah, and then in order to connect the microphone to this little table or little platform here, ended up one of, with one of these little internal mic mounts usually used in a, you know, something like a kick drum. So uh, I'll leave links and all that down below. Uh, one mistake before you get into this, uh, this guy's 24 volts and we're basically all said and done kicking 12 volts at this. Uh, you'll see that I can only use the top two highest settings, which once again, you'll see isn't really a big deal. I mean, it's, it, Basically, I have to go on the fastest modes when I'm sweeping, which is not very fast, so I, I'm not worried about it. But the extra, extra slow, slow, slow uh, sweeping, I'm not able to do just because we're kicking only 12 volts at a 24 volt stepper motor. So yeah, we'll just put it together and we'll show you some more. All right, so the stepper motor here is a four wire. And in this case, I'm gonna put it right in with the, um, with the motor driver module and you're, you're gonna get different colors on the motors, you know, when it, whatever you buy. In this case, I had to figure it out with, with some Google Translate um, deciphering Chinese characters in order to figure out where to put the wires on my module. So that's what I'm doing right here. Here we go. All right, next we're gonna think about the power. So you can get these power supplies with something like this. And then of course you got your positive and negative. Positive, negative. Uh, so we're gonna run the power directly to the module. And as you can see here, this is where 
um, it's 12 volts coming in. And then I want to jump over here to the 5 volts. This 5 volts is going out. So the 5 volts is actually going to power the uh, remote control, the, the motor driver controller. And so that power app happens to be right here. So once again, we got the 12 volts going in and then 5 volts going out to there. And then both of them are going to use um, this hub, this ground hub right here. Uh, they'll be the black wires. So I'm gonna hook up that next. Um, if you've never seen some of these, these are pretty, pretty useful. Makes things pretty easy, um, you know, throwing wires in and um, taking them out, especially if you're experimenting. But these are pretty great. Anyway, I'm gonna use these, this to get all three wires uh, into the ground, essentially. Yeah, so we'll have the power coming from here, going into the board, right? And then I happen to connect the ground partially. So the power coming in the ground um, because I need to make space for the remote board of which I'm gonna put this ground into here. So it sh all three of those share the same ground or all two of them, I should say, share that one ground. And then uh, this red wire here, technically it'll be the for the five volts coming out of the module over here. Cool, so we got power. Um, I didn't plug it in yet, but power's connected. Uh, now the remote or technically the controller needs to, this is, these are the four wires. The controller needs to control the module, which in turn basically sends um, all the commands through here, through these wires to the stepper motor. So next step, we gotta put that into this little area here. Um, I kind of have it rigged up right now, but in this case, I'm just gonna add a little bit more wire and then I'll have these little Dunlap, I think they're called, Dunlap connectors, and then I'll be able to put them you know, right here in the right spot. I'll get that figured out and then take a picture for you. All right, it's gonna start looking like a hot mess around here, but I, I basically just needed to extend out these wires. So on the controller, you have those four wires coming out. And then I needed, in this case, I needed these Dunlop ends in order to put them on these four pins right there. Try to get it some power. Cool, that's promising. This guy always starts at five, but like I said, 12 volts, trying to power a 24 volt motor. Um, I crank it all the way up to nine, which is the highest setting in this case. Yeah, looks like we got power there, so let's see what happens. All right. Sweet. Next step, how do we get a microphone on here, right? So like I said earlier, I found some uh, internal mic mounts by Gibraltar in this case. Comes in a little pack. Um, I got two of them. Uh, here's the open one that I was already try, you know, experimented with. I just thought, hey, I don't know, maybe I'll want two mics on there for some reason. I don't know how that would work, but that would be a future thing. Um, also, looking back at this unit that I got here, you know, it's it's pretty sturdy, pretty heavy. And I like that idea uh, only because if I did have two mics, you know, on this, um, I think it would handle it just fine. But uh, yeah, so I got this, these mounts. Um, I did have to, you know, drill a little bit more because the screws that I found went to the hardware store. I had to come up with my own screws, got these hex screws. Um, 
it didn't quite fit in the channel. So anyway, I just had to drill it out. And it's kind of funny, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't have any washers around, so uh, I just grabbed what I could, but come to find out, I might use this little hook for something in the future, who knows? Or that little hole. Anyway, I'll crank those down, but while I got you, these are pretty cool because, you know, you can adjust them. You got, you know, left and right, you got, you know, forward and back, so you can get yourself in a pretty good position. In this case, in this case, I have it back like so. Haven't really used it yet, haven't experimented, but, uh, you know, and then I, get the mic up like that. And anyway, got lots of flexibility. Uh, it's not completely remote, like the big fancy thousand dollar, well, not thousand dollar, but like the big fancy, you know, 400, $500 units. Um, this was kind of a lifesaver right here. A good find in my opinion. And yeah, that's about it. So appreciate it. Have a good day.